Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for our Bible study today. So if you brought your Bibles today, turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. And so if you were with me last Wednesday, we studied a couple verses in this chapter. We touched on one part, but we'll, we'll look at another part today. And so reading verse 6, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. Verse 7 and 8. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. And so, brothers and sisters, a fourth of the earth is a big part of the earth. Uh, to kill with the sword is obviously war. And there's famine and pestilence which, you know, we have the COVID-19, we have a vaccine, praise God, praise Jesus, but other pestilences are coming, and war and famine, because it's the beginning of sorrows prior to the Great Tribulation when it really gets bad, okay? But what we learned last week, as, as we just read in verse 6, do not harm the oil and the wine. And what we did last week is we looked at the parable of the ten virgins. And when Jesus comes for the virgin church, virgin representing purity, five of the virgins have the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit. And they get to go with the Lord, praise God. That should be you and me if you're saved today. Amen? Man, but the other five, though they're they go to church, they read their Bible, they pray, they proclaim Christianity. They are Christians. They don't deny. It. They're not living a righteous life for the Lord. They're not good servants, meaning they're not obedient. Okay, and so they don't have the Holy Spirit. Because remember. Acts 2.38 explains clearly how we receive the Holy Spirit. The word says, Be baptized in the name of Jesus and repent and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, brothers and sisters? And so, if you have repented of your sinful ways and you're living for the Lord, you have the Holy Spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. And God knows that, right? And he forgives us. Praise the Lord. Praise Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. Because he died for your sins. And he forgives us if we ask him for forgiveness when we realize that we've made a mistake. But we're not going to go on perpetually sinning and, and as we did before we were saved. Right? Okay. So now we're going to look at, right above it, it says, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, okay? So, you know, the Lord talks about planting the seed and there's a harvest and the harvest is, is ripe, right? The harvest is, is many, but, but the servants to go out to the harvest are few, and so here they're being weighed, okay? And so we're going to look at a parable in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, to get a better understanding. And it's 
It's a parable of the wheat and tares. Tares represents weeds. So keep that in mind as we go through the parable. I'm reading from verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into the barn. Brothers and sisters, the owner of the farm is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And the enemy that comes in, puts tares and weeds in there, is the devil, Satan. And the servants that come to the Lord are the pastors. And they say, do you want us to pull out the weeds? In other words, kick them out of the church. But he says, no, unless you take the wheat out with them. In other words, brothers and sisters, the pastors don't know. Only God knows who's in the church really serving him. Who in the church really has the Holy Spirit, who has repented 100% for our Lord and Savior. Only God knows that. And so he tells them, no, you might make a mistake. You understand? So then he says that he will have the reapers first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. The reapers are the angels. Yes, and the ones that are proclaiming Christianity, they have a Bible, they pray, they go to church, but they're not living for the Lord 100%. You see, brothers and sisters, he wants 100% out of you. Many people, Christians, I will say not genuine Christians, because they want to keep back that one sin. They only want to give the Lord 99%. And you can't do that, brothers and sisters. And we all have to be good stewards of our brothers and sisters. And so sometimes... The Holy Spirit will direct and guide you to correct a brother and sister. You'll see them stumbling in an area. Maybe every time you drive by a particular bar, you see your friend's car parked out there. As you go home to eat dinner with your family. And so you sit down with the brother and you say, you know, God doesn't like this. He says, drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. The guy is probably an alcoholic, right? And he needs help. And he needs the brother or the sister to, to tell him, hey, get some help. Go to AA. Ask God to help you stop sinning in that area that the devil knows what to go after. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy anything that's God's. And you can't let him. So if you see that you got a leak in your house, you're the temple of God. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't want to lose that Holy Spirit. Right? So you've got to go to the landlord, the Lord, and pray to him and ask him for help. Help to eliminate the sin 
that is ultimately going to get you to lose the Holy Spirit. Because the scripture is clear. In Hebrews 10, 26, it says, if you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. The sacrifice was Jesus dying on the cross for you. Without that, you don't get saved, right? We, no matter what we do, we can't get there without that. Right? Yes. And so, you've got to ask the Lord for help. For help, brothers and sisters. He will never leave us, okay? But if you leave him into perpetual sinning, willfully sinning is going back to sinning the way you did before you were saved, okay? He will turn his back on you as he did in, the, in Romans chapter one. He turns a back on these people and they defile their bodies, the scripture says, okay? He will give you room. He's long-suffering and he'll give you room. He'll give you slack to come back to him. It's not like your parents, your earthly parents chasing you every time you make a mistake. He doesn't do that. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise Yeshua. Right? But he's not going to wait forever for you to come back to the kingdom, to give him 100%. So do it. Do it today, brothers and sisters. Because we're in the last generation. And... When he comes for that church, you want to be on board. You want to be one of those five virgins that has the oil. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, remember, today is a new day and tomorrow's going to get better. Amen?